day, folks. Welcome to Just Omer. My name is Omer C. Ahern, Jr., and this is my periodic report to the people of Grafton County and beyond about what's going on in our Grafton County government and our Grafton County facilities up in North Haverhill. Um, we, uh, there are three county commissioners in Grafton County. Uh, there are 10 counties in New Hampshire. Each county has a board of commissioners of three each. And under state law, uh, the county commissioners are responsible for the operation, and the management, and the oversight of a county nursing home, a county house of correction and jail, and uh, originally each of the counties had a county farm. Grafton County is the only county in New Hampshire now that still has a fully operational working farm. Dairy cows, pigs, chickens, uh, growing crops in the you know, spring, summer, and harvesting in the fall. With the purpose of the farm uh, originally was to feed into the feed the feet people in the nursing home and feed the people, uh, the inmates uh, in the uh, Department of Corrections. So I serve with two other people. Uh, there, as I said, there were three county commissioners. Uh, the chairperson of the Grafton County Board of Commissioners is Commissioner Wendy Piper. And she's from the town of Enfield. And her district uh, that she's elected from is District 1 which includes the towns of uh, Hanover, Lebanon, and Enfield. And we also serve uh, with uh, a new county commissioner, uh, Commissioner Martha McLeod of Littleton, New Hampshire. And uh, Commissioner McLeod is the uh, commissioner elected from District 2, which uh, includes the towns in the northern part of Grafton County, and the western part of Grafton County. And then Commissioner Ahern, um, I am elected from the folks in District 3, which uh, are the towns in eastern Grafton County and the southern part of Grafton County. So uh, the towns that, um, you know, I are in District 3 go up to Campton and Warren and over to Groton, and over to Grafton, Alexandria, and then down to Bristol, uh, Ashland, Holderness, and of course uh, Plymouth, Hebron, and uh, uh, all the towns in that area. So the Grafton County Commissioners, we meet uh, normally on the, uh, uh, every Tuesday uh, during the month. And uh, th those meetings are where we meet with the county administrator, going over you know, the how things are going financially for the county. And we also meet with uh, different department heads and elected officials. So our meeting uh, was yesterday, January 24th. And of course, we start out with the Pledge of Allegiance at every meeting. And our meetings are held up in North Haverhill normally at the uh, county administration building um, and our meetings start at nine o'clock and I do want to re-emphasize that if anybody out there if you would like to attend any of the county commissioner meetings uh, they're, they're open to the public you can attend in person and uh, if you would like to attend uh, virtually via zoom just uh, let uh, our Administrative Assistant Samantha Norcross know that you would like to attend and she can arrange to get you the uh, necessary information so that you can attend the meeting via Zoom. And there is also the opportunity for you to ask questions even if you're attending virtually. Uh, the only part of the commissioner's meetings you, we, we can't let the general public attend are the uh, sessions that are non-public pursuant to RSA 91-A colon 3. And just about every meeting these days, we're having a, uh, uh, a non-public session, normally dealing with uh, employee issues. And so the, uh, anything where names are going to be mentioned, um, we uh, can't 
have those uh, meetings in public unless it's about one of the county commissioners. And anything pertaining to a county commissioner, uh, an elected official, cannot be uh, considered or talked about in a non-public session. It would have to be talked about in a public session. So, again, uh, yesterday, the 24th of January, we met at 9 o'clock at the uh, county uh, complex up in North Haverhill. And uh, the first person on the agenda to speak was the uh, county forester, uh, also known as the University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension Educator uh, Forest Resources, uh, in quotes, county forester, Jim Frome. Uh, Jim is the county forester, and he brought us up to date on uh, how the uh, 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 scheduled timber cut is going to be happening. Uh, the county owns about 750 acres of timberland up there on uh, up there in North North Haverhill. Uh, most of that land is across the Dartmouth College Highway from the uh, 25 acres uh, of the uh, complex where the nursing home, House of Correction, County Courthouse, and the County Administration buildings are located. Uh, they're on the uh, west side. Those buildings are on the west side of the highway. Most of the woodlands are on the uh, uh, west side uh, of the, of the uh, Dartmouth College Highway. So Jim gave us an update on that. Um, he says we're going to be uh, harvesting probably somewhere between around 80 acres uh, of, of that timberland because we have a, a forestry management plan that was put together a few years ago. And, you know, we're, we're still within the, the bounds of that time frame. And uh, so we don't do, you know, we don't do the timber cuts over the entire 750 acres at one time. We, the, over the years have been certain sections that have been cut. And as the timber grows and matures, uh, that's when we make the decision to do a timber cut. So we're going to be doing, uh, cutting some uh, red oak, uh, some... Uh, uh, red maples, and uh, so of course some white pine up there, and a few other uh, species there. So, and that timber cut was supposed to be done this winter, but it looks like uh, because of some uh, delays, we're not gonna be able to do the, the cut until sometime this spring or this summer. Uh, the other thing that uh, Jim mentioned to us is that they're going to be some, uh, uh, some events that are going to be held uh, on the uh, uh, grounds. One of them on April 15th is a chainsaw class. So if you're out there and you want to learn a little bit more about how to properly uh, use your chainsaw, how to use the, the proper protective safety equipment, uh, protective uh, clothing, uh, then you may want to attend that um, chainsaw class on April 15th. Uh, and contact Jim uh, up at the uh, UNH Cooperative Extension Office up in North Haverhill. All of these phone numbers are on the county website. So uh, if you just Google Grafton County, New Hampshire, you'll get to the website and you can find all these phone numbers. And one other uh, event that's going to be held there uh, is we're going to be doing some uh, forest fire training. We're going to be working with uh, some of the local uh, fire uh, departments uh, on how to uh, handle a f if we have a fire out in the woods I have, a, have, have our own have, have a forest fire out there because there's a lot of forestry land in Grafton County and in northern New Hampshire so we're going to be uh, uh, making uh, our county parts of our county land available for a uh, d demonstration uh, we're not going to be doing a big fire up there no, but, but to, to work with people and, and do some training up there. And uh, th th this is being paid for by a grant. And uh, if, if, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can certainly give Jim Frohn. Jim's last name is spelled F-R-O-H-N. Again, Jim is the county forester. Uh, the next uh, person on the agenda was Nicole Mitchell. She is the uh, alternative sentencing director and uh, she she gives us a very detailed report because Nicole uh, oversees the juvenile restorative justice
program at the county level, the adult diversion program at, at the county level. Uh, she uh, also uh, uh, covers the uh, CARE and the CARE Plus program. CARE stands for Community Assessment, Reentry and Education and Supervision. And uh, this is a program to help get young people uh, and others who have had trouble with the law, have had run-ins with the law, uh, maybe have been incarcerated or, or something, and helps to get them back into the community. Uh, so another program uh, uh, that she uh, is involved in um, is working with local police departments, and she uh, she uh, is working with the uh, Alexandria Police Department. And the big issue she's working with right now uh, is housing. Folks, we've got a real critical challenge here in the state of New Hampshire and, and beyond the state of New Hampshire, trying to find housing for the people out there that for whatever reason they're not able to find suitable housing. I'm not talking about anything fancy, but, you know, there are reports of people, you know, living in tents out in the woods, even in this weather, people living under bridges uh, among our many, many rivers here in Grafton County and other places. So uh, this is something that she's trying to address, but it's, it's an issue that we've been trying to address for many, many years. Uh, especially here in Grafton County and, and in the Plymouth area. So uh, if you'd like to know more about the alternative sentencing program uh, up at Grafton County, they certainly have information on uh, the web as well. Our next, uh, our next presenter at the meeting was uh, uh, the superintendent of the Department of Corrections, Tom Elliott. Tom is a Marine. Uh, once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. And uh, Tom, kind of, we were expecting this. Tom has been giving us, uh, you know, a heads up here for the last year or so to let us know that he's going to be retiring uh, at the end of August here in, in 23. And he gave us his uh, letter uh, notice to, to the county commissioners. Uh, this is, uh, the letter says, I am submitting to you my notice to retire from the Grafton County Department of Corrections. My last day of employment will be August 31st, 2023. It has been my honor and privilege to serve Grafton County in many different capacities and under the umbrella of the Department of Corrections and to, and to have earned your trust over the years with such a great responsibility as running a correctional facility. So um, what's going to happen is Grafton County will be seeking a uh, new uh, county uh, corrections uh, supervisor. And uh, we will be advertising for that position probably beginning the 1st of April. Uh, but just I want to just give folks a heads up. If you know of someone out there or if you yourself uh, feel that you would be an appropriate person um, to be the uh, corrections superintendent, um, certainly uh, you can send a letter of, of interest to the Human uh, Resource Department uh, at uh, Grafton County, and uh, we will certainly consider that. Um, and we just need to find someone who will fit in. Uh, it's not easy being a, a, a correctional superintendent these days with all the laws that are out there, uh, bail reform, the uh, drug and alcohol and mental health issues that affect many, many, many of the uh, young people and older people that have to come in uh, because of the uh, uh, criminal, criminal justice system. Uh, one of the things that's kind of unique to, to Grafton County right now is we have a, uh, we have a correctional facility uh, that uh, was built and came online in, in 2011. And 
We have, I think, one of the newest uh, correctional facilities in the state of New Hampshire at the county level. Uh, we do provide uh, correctional uh, coverage for Co Coas County for their female uh, inmates. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, trying to help each other out uh, in these, in our county situations in, among the 10 counties. So, uh, after giving us his letter of um, notice that he's going to be retiring as of the 31st of August, uh, Superintendent Elliott also gave us his t commission's report. Um, the population in the House of Correction right now, the in-house population is 57 inmates. Uh, the male medium unit, and, and, and our correctional facility is made up of pods, and so each one of these units is, is a pod. So in, in unit F, uh, the me male medium unit, there are 20 uh, residents, inmates there. Uh, in the E unit, which is the uh, female unit, there are 11 uh, female uh, residents, inmates there. Some of, some of which are our Grafton County uh, uh, residents that are supposed to be incarcerated. And then there's also some from Coas County, as I said earlier. The D unit, which is the uh, minimum unit, uh, 11 inmates there. Uh, uh, the C unit, there are, that's the maximum uh, unit. That's for those that are really going to be carefully watched and, and supervised. There are nine, <coughs> excuse me, there are nine inmates there. Of course, these would all be male. And in the intake unit, we have six people there waiting to be classified and so that they know which of the uh, other four units uh, they would need to uh, uh, be housed in. Uh, out of facility right now, there are 22 inmates. Um, they are out either on electronic monitoring, uh, they're on, could be on daily work release, or some of them could be out on pretrial uh, services. So um, again, as of July uh, 1st, 2022, we've had a total of 387 male inmates come in and out of our facility, and we've had 230 females come in and out of the facility. Uh, <clears throat> so one of the things that's very important for the uh, operations of the farm up in Grafton County is the farm operations rely on inmate labor. And having inmates working on the farm serves some, some very good positive purposes. Number one, it gets the inmates out of the House of Correction and getting them involved uh, in something that could be very useful to them and their families uh, upon their release from the Department of Corrections. Uh, some of these inmates learn how to milk the cows. Uh, they learn uh, how to, you know, keep the cows clean, how to keep the barn clean, uh, you know, milk storage. They learn how to deal with the uh, pigs, because we do have pigs up there, and how to, uh, you know, deal with the chickens, take care of the chickens, take care of the pigs, collect the eggs. Um, and uh, later on in the spring and the summer, they will help to plant the crops that we plant up there. Uh, the last couple of years, it's just been sweet corn, uh, winter squash, and pumpkins, and um, potatoes. We, we, I think we uh, plant, I think, two varieties, white and red potatoes up there. They seem to do well, although last summer we had a very poor uh, potato crop due to uh, the very, very vagaries of the, of the climate. Uh, no, no rain, and then when the rain comes, uh, it, it's too much. And Anyway, so um, we appreciate the cooperation uh, uh, between the uh, Department of Corrections and the farm. So that's the quick report on the Grafton County uh, Department of Corrections. We had uh, Marcy Hornick, the county attorney, uh, came in. She was next on the agenda. 
and she had some issues uh, or to, to discuss in non-public session, and uh, we, we discussed those things with her. Um, the uh, other items on the agenda, um, the Department of Motor Vehicles, the New Hampshire Department of Motor Vehicles, uh, they have an office area in the county courthouse. <coughs> and the, uh, because the county courthouse is owned by Grafton County, uh, the state of New Hampshire, to have their uh, superior court system there and to have their probation and parole officers there and to have the Department of Motor Vehicles licensing office there, they, they pay rent. So the, uh, uh, the uh, lease agreement we have with the state has been, um, uh, it's, it's, going to, it's going to terminate, I think, at the end of June. And so th there was a uh, proposal from the state for a new uh, renewal, for another two or three year renewal. And uh, the commissioners discussed that. And of course, we agreed to it, um, except we did uh, put in that we would be requesting another $50 per month. Uh, I don't want to say any more because that has, I don't, I'm not sure that that's gotten back to the Department of Motor Vehicles yet. So anyway, we, we're, we're very pleased to be able to provide these, uh, th this area for them to do their uh, necessary uh, things under the law. But talking about the courthouse, you know, we're, we're, as I've mentioned several times over the last year and a half or so, uh, the present courthouse, which was built in the early 1970s, uh, according to some reports we've had done by engineers and uh, uh, architects, uh, that present courthouse needs either a lot of uh, renovations, repairs, or when you look at the cost of building a new uh, facility, basically meeting the same uh, demands and the same uses that we have now and actually adding a little bit more space, uh, the architects and the engineers say we can build a newer building, a new building, for a couple of million dollars less than renovating and repairing the existing building. So we haven't made up our mind yet. The commissioners have not, in, in cooperation working with the county delegation, we have not decided yet how we're going to, uh, what, what we're going to do in that regard. Um, another, another issue uh, is, of course, and it's, it's an ongoing issue. I talk about it just, just about every time I give you one of, the, I uh, uh, provide you with this information on the program, Just Omer, is uh, we're still having problems filling all the uh, employ, employee slots that we have. And so uh, there was a request from the uh, maintenance department, the maintenance uh, uh, administrator, uh, superintendent, uh, Jim Oaks to uh, oh, add a sign-on bonus uh, for the skilled maintenance assistant position. We haven't been able to to uh, fill that position for I don't know almost a year, maybe longer. So um, the commissioners voted three to nothing to uh, uh, provide a, a uh, sign-on bonus uh, for someone who comes in and, you know, has worked long enough uh, to uh, justify giving them the, the, uh, the uh, sign-on bonus. The last item that we specifically talked about from the agenda is a discussion of uh, House Bill 186, House Bill 186, and uh, basically this is a request from Grafton County, Grafton County Commissioners, to be able to, again, with all the land that the county owns up there in North Haverhill, uh, the county, Grafton County, is looking for uh, the opportunity to provide its own um, septic systems on campus uh, in an effort to save some money by uh, not having to pay uh, the local municipality uh, for uh, their services in uh, providing the uh, uh, sewage uh, disposal. So we discussed that. Um, 
and that pretty much was the uh, county commissioners meeting. On Monday of this week, the county delegation met. The uh, county uh, delegation executive committee met. And one of the, um, and they meet periodically. Uh, and the main, one of the main reasons that the county delegation met on Monday of this week was uh, there was a very uh, urgent ARPA request from the uh, Mass Coma Healthcare Organization, and they had requested uh, uh, ARPA funding from the county in the amount of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to help get them through uh, the next four or five months to give them time to uh, complete their partnering with a local uh, healthcare. Uh, organization and uh, but because of the federal rules the state rules uh, getting the governor and the executive council to sign off and New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services uh, what they thought they were going to have completed back uh, in September of 2022 it just kept you know being delayed and delayed and so in order to continue to have Mascoma Healthcare continue to provide its services, they, they, they said they serve somewhere around 5,100 people um, over in that end of uh, over in that side of Grafton County, which includes um, several of the towns in uh, this District Three. So the commissioners uh, had approved a $200,000 uh, ARPA funding for them. But uh, the Delegation Executive Committee, which is the final decision maker with regard to the ARPA funding, uh, the uh, County uh, Executive Committee, County Delegation Executive Committee, in discussing the need and so on, they, they approved the original request of $250,000 from the Mascoma Healthcare Organization, and that was approved unanimous, unanimously nine to nothing. Uh, also at that meeting, uh, we get a uh, report from the county treasurer, uh, Karen Liot Hill, and uh, she uh, gives a written report to the Delegation Executive Committee um, on how things are going with the county's financial situation. And uh, one of the things that she said, all the towns in Grafton County uh, paid all of their county taxes uh, on time uh, by, the, by the due date, which was uh, December 19th, 2022. Uh, taxes have all been paid, and um, the county collected a total of $26,532,050 in tax revenue uh, for the fiscal year 2023. Uh, some of this money uh, and because we also, uh, the county also receives money for the uh, services it provides to residents in the nursing home, and because there is some revenue derived from the farm, uh, we are able to put some money in the bank. So I've, I've run out of time again. I don't know where the time goes, but I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. I want to thank the folks here at PBTV for allowing me to do this. If you want to uh, contact me, uh, I am, uh, can, my phone number is 603-764-6024. My email is omer.ahern.jr at gmail.com. Thank you very much, and uh, I wish everybody uh, a safe rest of the winter, and uh, God bless the great state of New Hampshire, and God bless the Republic of the United States of America. Thank you and take care.